compliance audit uh, and open source project in that domain we have on Fedora hosted and also how to put uh, these things together and apply uh, SCAP on, on your infrastructure. So uh, given uh, the agenda is uh, fairly large, uh, I, I welcome you to ask question anytime. Just raise your hand and it will be okay. Uh, we will go through all these projects. Oh, uh, could you please raise your hand if you already heard about SCAP and Okay, so many hands, that's, that's, that's good. So many educated people and no one is contributing. That's <laughs> okay, so it's all about compliance audit. Uh, it's a part of a pro proactive security domain. Uh, we, uh, when we talk about compliance audit, uh, we mean figuring out whether whether machine is a uh, is in a, well, whether given machine is in a, in a state which is compliant with, with your security policy. So basically you need some security policy first, uh, which might be quite expensive to get. Security policy which exactly fits uh, your, your need of, of the organization you have and which uh, actually really adds any, any security. Uh, so why would you do, do that? Maybe you are just a super, super paranoid, or otherwise probably you are required by government re regula re regulations. Uh, the letter applies if you are uh, some, some part of government body, agency, military, uh, financial sector, energy sector, airlines, healthcare. So quite, quite large of, of domains and it's, it's growing. It's even growing in, into areas where it's not required by, by regulation. So later we will see a lot of acronyms, but don't be scared because there is no security without acronyms. <laughs> so this is the central, central picture of, uh, of the talk. Uh, you will see this again and again. Uh, it shows how, how presented technologies work together. Uh, in boxes, we have st SCAP stand uh, standards and common uh, security guidances, and in circles, we have open source project we have on Fedora hosted. So, yeah. So we start with SCAP. SCAP stands for Security Content Automation Protocol, but uh, we think it's rather than protocol, it's group of interoperable standards and file formats uh, to describe some security artifacts and how, how, to, how, how to assess the information and so on. Uh, all, all the component standards are object oriented and they are written in XML, XML files. They each have some own X, 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 uh, SSD sch schema and uh, there is multiple version of each standards. Current version of, of the whole group is 1.2, which is third version. And yeah, I, I should say that uh, it's, it's open standards. It's governed by NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, but everyone is welcome to, to write a comment or contribute. We will need one, one part, especially, uh, which is XCCDF, uh, extensible configuration checklist description format, uh, which is which is somewhat high level high level uh, standard above all, all these. Which, uh, it it puts all 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 the other together and forms a security policy or checklist. The the file uh, consists mainly of a list of rules which can be grouped to three by, by group elements. Each rule has a, has a check elements which points to, uh, to oval file or, or some other resources which uh, define how to check, how, how to assess the information on the system from, from this checklist. Uh, the checklist itself doesn't have any, any, any information for, for program how to assess the information. It, 
it's mainly if, if you have old security policy in, in plain text on, on paper, you, you can just start to write your XCCDF file. And single XCCDF file can have uh, multiple security policies in, the, in, in this. They are di distinct policies. Uh, for, for each, you, you have profile elements which can turn some rules on and off and refine some values. So you basically have one file for all the infrastructure, one policy for, for desktops and another for servers. So this is the very, very brief example of XCCDF rule. So in check, uh, pl please note the check element which points, points out to some oval file and oval de definition ID which is used to automatically assess the information on, on the system. This is just 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 example of some rule in, in the checklist. So you have some information about what checklist might be. Uh, this, this one requires us to disable SSH root login uh, on the system, which might be a really good idea. So we have some notion of, of the standard. Now we, have, now we need some content, uh, how to get, get the content in comp compliant with the standard, and then we will move uh, to the scanning tools. So you probably never start writing your security policy from scratch. You either use uh, some template from ISO standard series or some government content or content uh, from open source repositories. You can start uh, editing by hand, but you will fail. You will fail on syntax with X, uh, of these XML files. And then even if you get the syntax right, you will fail on semantics because each object has some defined semantics and it's quite long reading and and so. And also, these all objects in these XML files are uh, cross-referenced by IDs, so you will probably screw these IDs as well. So another option <laughs> is, is to have some graphical user interface for editing. Um, we, but the problem is that you will fail also. There is no, no good <laughs> graphical user interface for, for editing SCAP to, uh, I, I know about. We have something on SCAP Workbench, but uh, it uh, doesn't even have undo, and it's quite hard to edit this feature. So if you are editing large files and you have no undo, it's, it's really hard. And you, uh, when multiple people co collaborate on the policy, and some changes happens there and there, you will almost always have, have some conflict when you are merging together like in Git. So there is third option, generating the content from another source, which is uh, what developed SCAP Security Guide project. They basically have some small, small files, in, not in the SCAP format, but in another, another format. They call it uh, shorthand. And they, uh, for each rule in the checklist, they have a separate file. So uh, the, the final SCAP, SCAP files are um, created uh, in, a, in a build time by a group of XSLT transformations. So this really scales for multiple authors on SCAP security guide there is like five or, or six authors heavily contributing and they build and that's actually the next slide. So we will talk about first project, uh, which tries to uh, create a new version of USGCB and stick disaster guidances, which are currently av available for RHEL 5, but they are not available for RHEL 6, and they are building, building it, and they are really near. E even if you, you want to apply SCAP on your Fedora, I think this is the best point of start because they have quite a large large checklist and you can always something disable. So yeah, and they have uh, some content also for JBoss Enterprise Application Server 5. Next, next project is SCE, 
community content, which does not use Oval, but uses scripts, so it's quite uh, quick to get, get started with, or it's, um, it's growing r really quickly because you, you don't need to write any Oval. And uh, in the last few weeks, we started to develop PCI DSS, uh, PCI DSS uh, content, or PCI DSS is proprietary guidance for uh, for car industry, and uh, we we are working towards having this in in SCAP format. So that's probably it, Martin. I'll switch this to Martin. So now that you know what SCAP is and you have the content, uh, you need tools to apply it to your machines. Uh, you will definitely need OpenSCAP, which is an LGPL library uh, implementing all the SCAP standards. It uh, supports SCAP 1.1 and 1.2. Uh, we've also recently added CP applicability, uh, which allows you to describe what platforms uh, each of the rules applies to. And uh, if you're scanning on some platform that the rule doesn't apply to, uh, the tool tells you, tells you so. Uh, we've also added uh, data stream support, uh, which, is, which is a new, uh, new feature of SCAP 1.1. Uh, it's, it's basically an archive of all the files so that you can, uh, you can transfer the entire content in, in just one XML file. And uh, we have a working prototype of remediation, which, uh, which is, if, if a rule fails, uh, this allows you to fix it if it is in the content. Remediation is usually just a base script that, that runs. So if, if for example, uh, there are wrong permissions for some file, this base script would fix these permissions. Uh, we've had uh, several API and ABI breaks in the past. So <laughs> we've, we've uh, in addition to the low-level API, uh, we've, we've added the high-level API, which is much less powerful. It, is, uh, it doesn't have as many features, but uh, we hope we will be able to keep it more stable uh, in the future. Part of OpenSCAP is the OSCAP command line tool, uh, which allows you to use features of the OpenSCAP library from command line. This picture uh, shows you all the subcommands that uh, the OSCAP tool can do. I think there are just there are uh, two important uh, subcommands, and all the rest is just for advanced use. Uh, probably the most important is OSCAP XCCDF Evaluate, OSCAP XCCDF Eval, uh, which takes an XCCDF file or source data stream, applies it to your local machine, uh, it prints the results, it allows you to write the, the results uh, into a file in uh, either asset reporting format, which is the new, sta new standard, or XCCDF results. Uh, the second most important is uh, OSCAP Oval Evaluate, which instead of taking XCDF, it just takes the old file, evaluates all the objects in it, and prints the results. Uh, it's useful for debugging. I don't think it's that useful for evaluating XCDF content. So this is how the OSCAP tool prints uh, the, the results while it's scanning. As part of the OpenSCAP project, uh, we've added, we've added uh, We've created a new, new simple standard, which is called SCE. Uh, uh, we, were trying, we are trying to address the difficulty of creating oval content. It, it's a very specific language. It's very special to this field. Almost nobody outside, outside of the group uh, of the, I think, uh, of the uh, security engineering group knows, knows about it. So we've created a simple standard that just uses uh, by scripts or any, any executable file, uh, so you can write checks in your favorite language even, and the exit codes are mapped to XCDF results. This is a configure time option in OpenSCAP. It's, it's not official, uh, it's not in SCAP standards, so uh, it defaults to disabled, but we have this enabled in, in the Fedora packages. And there are actually two independent implementations. 
because this standard was adopted by another uh, SK project called JOLO. Uh, if, you, if you don't prefer command line tools or you're just starting with SK, you probably want to try it out uh, without the steep learning curve of command line tools. Uh, so you, you can use SK Workbench, which is a GUI tool. But uh, currently, the SK Workbench is at least, at least partly broken. Uh, it does some tailoring, but it's not according to specification. It's, I, I'm not sure, I, I haven't written the tailoring part, but it's, I think it's an invention of, of the old SK Workbench. Uh, there are some subtle bugs with it as well that are hard to track and hard to fix. Uh, it doesn't support data streams, which I think going forward is what everybody will be using. Uh, it, do, it only does local scanning. Uh, we've broken it many times with uh, OpenSCAP API changes. And it, it, it uses OpenSCAP through uh, Python bindings, which are source of many bugs with, with memory allocation and so on. And it has a large code base, uh, especially because uh, it has an editor, which almost nobody uses and is, is very broken. And this is the biggest part of the code base. So instead of fixing Escape Workbench forever, uh, we decided it might be a good idea to uh, try to write a prototype, perhaps write a simpler tool using the high-level API. Uh, I've been working on this in the past 14 days, and I've written a small tool in uh, C++. It uses the high-level API. It does almost no, uh, the code is very, very simple and stupid. It just uses the, the uh, high-level API, which gives us a, a feature for free, uh, the data stream support. All the scans are performed with the OSCAP tool, so it just uh, starts a process and, uh, and parses the output of the process. So uh, there's less opportunity for breakage, uh, and only the OSCAP tool needs to be certified. The OSCAP workbench, uh, if OSCAP tool is certified, OSCAP workbench uh, scans with a certified tool suddenly. Uh, I've been trying to uh, optimize the new workbench for the typical scanner uh, usage. Uh, which is uh, user opens content, selects a profile, selects a target machine, and, and, just, and just scans. I think this is 99% of all usages, and the old workbench had many steps in between uh, with tailoring and customization, and as far as I know, it's not used that much and just confuses users. So this is how the prototype looks right now while it's scanning. And this is how the results are shown. Uh, as a new feature, we can now save the results in, in the result data stream format as well, instead of just XCDF result. Uh, I've been also trying to address one other problem, because if, if, you, want to, uh, if you want to use a GUI tool for escape uh, scanning, you have the problem that uh, most, most of the policies forbid to, to have uh, XORG and desktop environment on the target machine for security reasons. Uh, so if you perform a scan there and then remove XORG, uh, you will never get, you will never get uh, a, a clean, in clean results from this. You will also get fail, fails. So one way to address this is uh, since the new workbench scans with, with OSCAP tool directly, uh, we, we can scan remote machines with SSHD and with some tricks with SCP and copying things uh, back and forth, uh, we can actually use SCAP tool locally on a machine with desktop environment and scan a remote machine which doesn't have any desktop environment whatsoever and just has the OSCAP tool. It works by uh, creating an SSH socket, the master connection socket, and just uses that to SCP, SCP the, the content to the target machine. It runs OSCAP tool there, uh, reports, uh, transfers the results back, and just shows you the results in, in the GUI tool. I've decided to avoid some of the features that I think are not used as much and would just clut clutter the interface and make the co code much harder to, uh, to maintain. I don't plan to ever support scanning multiple machines because there are better, better tools for that, uh, which will be described later. And I decided not to do any content editing, in, at least in this tool, because it, it, it's, 
Uh, we've seen that it's very hard to implement. It would have to have undo redo. The code would be huge, and it just doesn't scale very well. Uh, there would have to be intermediate formats anyway. You can find the new workbench in, in Escape Workbench Git repository in the rewrite branch. Uh, I will probably move it so, uh, somewhere else. I'm not sure yet. It's just a prototype. Suggestions are welcome, of course. So I've, uh, I've now described how to, how to scan a machine while it's running. Uh, in some environments, it's critical to ensure the machine is compliant even before it starts. Uh, for example, some policies uh, require that the machine is compliant before it connects to any network. So one, one, uh, one way to address this is to make sure the machine is compliant while it's installed, uh, before it even boots for the first time. Uh, this could be achieved by integrating uh, escape functionality into an Anaconda add-on. Uh, how to describe this? So this is just a mockup. It doesn't work yet. Uh, it's just it's just a Glade file basically. But this is how we think it could work. Uh, if you enable this this add-on, you could select uh, a security profile in Anaconda. You could select an XCDF profile, and uh, Anaconda would perform scans and tell you about failures. Uh, there are some, we have some issues and some concerns about this uh, because we would basically be scanning in uh, intrude and so the services and all the system wouldn't be running at this time so it's quite hard and uh, the content would have to be special, it would basically have to test files to make regex matches and so on in files. Uh, there have to be special flags for remediation of partitioning for example because you can't do anything about it once it's partitioned. But we think this could be solved by having custom content for just for this use case. Uh, to address some of the issues, uh, perhaps Anaconda could uh, perform a full system scan after it for boost, boots for the first time as part of first boot. It would show the, show the results, allow some remediation, but of course you cannot remedy uh, partitioning and some other issues. Uh, in this case, we, we would only be scanning uh, the, the new installation. We would change root into it and, and just scan just scan the install image, not the live image. So the, the live system which is running the installation is never a concern? Or? Yeah, as, as far as this is concerned, just, that's not the concern. Yeah, and I'll, I'll now give the word back to Simon who will describe Spacewalk. standard for expressing uh, policy. We have some content, we have scanner, even graphical user interface. We can, with Anaconda plugin, we can uh, scan our systems before it boots for the first time. And next is uh, Spacewalk. Spacewalk is a system managing system. Uh, it has quite a lot of managing features. I'll not have a time to describe them. And rather, and, and we integrated SCAP into, into the spacewalk. Uh, so you can now scan your machines uh, from this web user interface, or even you, you, ha you can have uh, cron jobs which schedules scans through, through the API in, in a spacewalk and have all, all, all the scans around the infrastructure in the same time without any, any uh, oh, work, I don't know. So uh, we are looking and on uh, some system in the spacewalk 
eva.example.com is his domain name. And now I will go through the screenshot rather than, some, rather than showing some technical details. So you have some idea how it works. Oh, it's really blank. Yeah. So on audit subtap, uh, there are results for, for this machine. So far there is none, so let's schedule one. Uh, when we are scheduling scan, we use the, the very same command line uh, interface as, as, a, on, a, as a, on, on a box when we are logged through, through SSH. This brings us a lot of flexibility because uh, otherwise uh, each new feature in Scab World would require you to upgrade your spacewalk. So this balance between flex flexibility and features. So uh, you need you, you need to know uh, command line arguments of OSCAP and write them there. You also need to know where is your content, but uh, otherwise you can use all the, all the features of OSCAP. Question. Yeah. That uh, part you listed there, is that uh, on the spacewalk management system or is it locally on that box? Yeah, this is a spacewalk management system. It's a centralized one, one box you have for, for managing all your infrastructure. So and uh, passes that file over to the... No, I, unfortunately, no. We suggest uh, you to uh, build RPM from, from the content and distribute, uh, spacewalk uh, can distribute RPMs very well. Uh, so we suggest you to, to build RPM, sign it, push it to spacewalk, and click, 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 and have it everywhere. Uh, it, it brings us a little bit of, because with RPM you have, uh, you have signed RPM, uh, you can verify this RPM by SHA-256. So also, this, this is not only, only one file. Security policy uh, has many files and uh, we would need to untransfer them all, and maybe each day. It doesn't 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 really make m much sense for me, or you you may disagree. So this is a result of scan. It has only one one rule that says that no hashes are out, outside etc shadow, and there are some metadata. Uh, Spacewalk doesn't store all the results. They uh, it it doesn't touch any oval. It only takes resume from, from XCCDF and stores like true false results. So you, you, you still need to lo log in to, to the machine and invest, investigate more, but at least you know uh, there, there is a red alert, something, something happened. So this, this is, I hope you see at least something. Uh, there is a list of uh, finished scans on the machine uh, we see some com compliance ratio and also we see icons. These icons have special meaning because Spacewalk compares uh, the finished scan with the last uh, similar scan of, of the same content, of, of the same profile. So you can, you can see immediately if, if the things are deteriorating, get, getting, get, getting worse or, or getting better. So exclamation mark, means that something has changed, but not, not that there is more fails, but something has changed. You need to investigate more. And red uh, X mark means that there is more fails than before. So if you click on, on the icon, if, if you click on the text, you will see uh, the, the description or the detail of the scan. But if you click on the icon, you will see the comparison of two scans. So here we are. It compares metadata and also all the uh, rule results, first scan and uh, second scan. Uh, re uh, differences are uh, highlighted, and you can see only differences. So you can uh, see immediately what, what, what's going wrong. The last, the last interface is the search interface. Uh, which allows you to search for for some some rule, which which for example failed on 
between given dates on all your systems or even on a subset of your systems. And we can see there are where two, two fails found. And if we uh, list uh, XCCDF instead of l l listing the rule results, we, we will see also the machines which, uh, which failed and overall results of, of that scan. So this is about spacewalk. And we have some life cycle slide here. Yeah. So basically we, we covered with with the scap some some of the some of the life cycle. We have still a lot of things to do. As you can see, I really don't like this slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so short term future plans. Uh, we work on, on the Anaconda integration. Uh, maybe they, 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 there might be some, some part in spacewalk in the regard with Anaconda's integration. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Uh, and we want, we, in last year, we, the, a lot of things happened and the scap entry barrier really lowered. Like there is much, much more content than a year, year ago. Uh, there is much better tooling in open source world in, in a year ago, but still uh, people are, are not coming. Like community people which will, will be interested just, just contributing. And they will probably never come. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Remediation, it's maybe interesting also. Uh, in XCCDF file, when you have the checklists and define checks how, how to check the, if, if the system is compliant, with, you, you can also define fixed uh, elements, which uh, brings your machine into, into the compliant state. And we have recently, uh, implemented this in OpenScap as a tech preview. And you can now scan and remediate uh, in just, just in one time. And it will be shortly uh, arriving also in Spacewalk. So thank you, thank you for your attention. I hope we, yeah, sure. And whatever source, and when the, those organizations release the new source, a uh, new version, where let's say root or Apache to have uh, all those sources are automatically checked, or you have to make step by step as a user and create a new rule for them. Well, they they release the guidance in form of SCAP often, so you can download a new one, build a new RPM, but you probably have might some minor changes here and there. So you might want to have some git and uh, probably, probably mer merge it. I don't know. It doesn't really happen in a, in a real world because these government bodies are uh, s slow bohemots and they release just real five guidance and never have any, any time for fixing. There are bugs in government guidance. I, I write them, but uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> they they just n never never have a time for releasing a new one. And you have a separate group, let's say, okay, the system will be set up as a server for government in the US, and that one will be used for health, or it is collected together. Sh shall the user uh, well, possible to list, okay, so this is okay for me, and this is not, or? Well, there is not uh, that much of uh, dif different policies. Uh, it all boils down to to the FISMA Act, which requires you something. And uh, that, that something is uh, uh, stated quite vague. So there is NIST and Mitre organizations, which are uh, like um, specifying it in, in the detail, what should be done. And they don't make dif differences, at least as far as I know, uh, be between uh, health, health computer and airlines computer. They just release 
some guidance for government computers, for government desktop computers, for both Windows, XP, Windows 7, maybe, and uh, RHEL 5 desktop. Any other? Yeah, great. Please, um, Cliff. Yeah, so the uh, Anaconda integration, where is it getting its rules from? Is it something like a Kickstart you will host? Yeah, in, in the Kickstart, there will be some template, uh, some uh, some snippet, uh, small. Uh, there there will be like uh, uh, section. a section, pl plugin, uh, okay. uh, OpenSCAP plugin, and some some data. And we think there will be only uh, URL to to the to the file. Maybe maybe uh, the certificate SSL for for getting the file uh, through through HTTPS, or uh, I would like to see uh, support for RPM. So you have some RPM with content in your Kickstarter tree, and this this snippet says like, okay, security guidance is this in this RPM. You Anaconda need to unpack it first, uh, extract extract the uh, the guidance, and then run it in in Chroot. Does Okay. Uh, what versions of RHEL support SCAP? Like, what we ship today, how many of them support SCAP? We, we ship RHEL uh, Open SCAP in RHEL 5 and RHEL 6. Okay. No RHEL 4. <coughs> <laughs> Pardon? Okay, we have last five minutes. I have seen there was a question in the back. In, on, yeah, please. Well, we have uh, in, in RHEL 6, we have open SCAP content, just exempl exemplary content. There might be, yes. I have, I have planned to work on that, but I, don't, I cannot speak for, for Red Hat. And you can have uh, quite, quite a good uh, content from GPS involvement, so if you contact Red Hat support, they will be able to, to write, uh, quite, uh, write content which fits exactly your organization. So, uh, Providing a content, it's quite hard because you have some life cycle of RHEL and the content might change more often. And also it's not clear what should be in the content. Like, uh, it's, 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 it's not clear uh, so far. Could you, could you please just speak up a little bit, because... Is there, um, in, in space, 
case for? Uh, are there any plans for uh, just ignoring some rules, uh, some rule output? Uh, but for example, if I take uh, the, um, the open scap content from uh, uh, the government, uh, for example, the Red, the Red Network daemon will be all, is always be critical because it should not be running well and using space for Yes, it is running. Uh, so are there any plans for just the possibility to ignore some rules when I cannot or I should not edit the files? Okay, you mean uh, RHN SD daemon? Uh, yeah, uh, the problem is that uh, in, in the government policy, uh, they have RHN requirement to have RHN SD daemon uh, disabled because they don't want to automatically get any updates. You can have this uh, by, f f you, you can have, have uh, achieved this uh, requirement by other, other means than uh, disabling RHN SD daemon. You can, for example, disable Yum, uh, yum updates D, or uh, uh, s dis disable uh, these repositories in Yum, maybe. Uh, basically, there is all, uh, there there must be balance between usability and and security. Uh, Spacewalk at some some on the usability side, but on the security side, you you must really have Arch and SD daemon disabled. Or <laughs> maybe you, you can be compliant and all will be good when you have OSAD daemon because uh, the writers of the policy didn't know about OSAD daemon and that it can do the same as RHNSD daemon. Uh, don't, don't blow. Just last, last question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys.